Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today it's time to put some gloss on this guitar. So in our last video on this series, what we did is we added a few coats of tongue oil. We mixed in a little bit of aniline dye with a couple of them and we got kind of this nice hue, just a little bit of an amber tone on the top, a little bit of that honey look that you get from some tongue oil, and then the back is ambered out a little bit. Prior to that, we put the graphics on here with stain pens, all Bellin products, by the way, and just looking great so far. Let me see if I can get an angle here that shows you. Yeah, we got this nice satin sheen on the back here. It's looking awesome, but here's the thing. Tongue oil's filling properties, you know, it's, it's not really for that. It's got a little bit and you can apply it with sandpaper to make it fill in more, but that wasn't what I was going for on this one. So what I've got is a little bit of grain showing on the top, a little bit of, you know, some areas that aren't as shiny. And I've, just, I've decided I want some gloss on here. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So I did promise you guys I would do this whole thing by hand so that you don't need any special equipment and you can follow along and everything. And so far it's been very easy, it's been you know, all hand applied, rub, that kind of stuff. Next, we're gonna do a brush on for this top. That's how we're gonna get that gloss. And we're gonna be using Bellin's Rock Hard Tabletop Urethane Varnish to do that. So, let's get in closer here and I'll show you how this is done. The first thing that we need to do here is make sure that we're protecting the areas that we don't want paint on. Pretty straightforward stuff. We're just gonna use some masking tape to cover them up. And in this case, because we have a fair bit of control over where we're putting our paint, because we're not spraying it, we don't have to tape up quite as much as we normally would. So what I've done here is tape the edge of my fretboard, and then I'm going to work my way around the guitar carefully and just put one strip of tape. If you're a little bit of a loose cannon when it comes to using a brush, you might want to tape the whole side. Paint can, of course, run over the tape onto the guitar, but if you're careful, it's not so much of an issue. For beginners, I recommend you do the whole side. It is a little bit difficult to control this stuff sometimes, but for my purposes, I'm just going to tape one line along the top edge. You probably noticed I missed the horn there. Don't worry, I do go get it. So if you're very OCD, uh, you can calm down. I'll get to it. The insides of the cavities, same kind of concept. If I'm spraying, I tape the whole thing, but because I'm brushing, I'm just going to run a line of tape around the top pretty straightforward. Make sure you're not having your tape sticking up above the edge because that can prevent you from painting right up to the edge with your brush and make things more difficult later on. So you want to try to avoid that. As far as the holes go, there are, there's more than one way to do this. I like to just ball up a piece of tape sticky side out and jam it in there. See that one wasn't big enough. You got to make sure you fill the hole. So take a decent sized piece of tape jam it up, make sure there's some stick on the outside, make sure you gotta kinda jam it in there and it will stay. There are other ways to do this, like I said. Um, some people use things like earplugs. Those work really well, especially for the holes in the headstock. What I'm doing now is prepping my surface for the paint by sanding it a little bit. I'm just using some thousand grit here. All I've got in, on there is that oil finish, so I have to be careful not to go too aggressive. So I stick with a very high grit because that's you know, that's rough enough for this paint to bond to. It's not going to be a problem. And it's an oil-based finish. I just use my hands in this case to clean off the excess dust. There I am fixing my problem with the horn. Of course, you're welcome to use wax and grease remover for your cleaning. It's probably a good idea, but it doesn't hurt to do it this way, especially for this type of finish. Now we're moving on to our rock hard tabletop urethane varnish. I'm going to give it a quick stir, even though it's it's clear and, and you know it, it comes pre-mixed but quick stir just to be on the safe side more so out of habit than anything but it never hurts to do that and then this stuff is actually pretty easy to brush out it's not super finicky you'll notice if you ever brush on for example a fast drying lacquer that you can't really brush over it a bunch of times or it strings up and gets gross and just doesn't work this stuff you can work out a little bit if there are some issues there some brush strokes, anything like that that you need to move around. You can just kind of keep brushing it a little bit. It's not a big deal, but ideally we do want to apply it in kind of single longer strokes to the extent that we can. And that's going to leave us kind of this nice smooth finish. Now it doesn't hurt to add a little bit extra. You may end up with a sag or a run or two, but that's not really a problem. 
I didn't encounter that issue here, but it does happen and you just let it dry, give it a good 24 or 48 hours to dry up and then you can sand it back to nice and smooth and add another coat. And on your last coat you go a little bit thinner so that you don't encounter that problem. You can build up several coats of this stuff, that is not a problem. So this is what it looks like after the first one and here I am with some 800 grit sanding once again. In this case, I'm trying to avoid using my fingers as much as possible. I, I use them for that rounded area, um, the indent around the outside of the carve. I can't use a block on this because it's not a flat surface, but as much as possible, you want to kind of use your palm or use your fingers in conjunction with one another to avoid putting grooves in it. Now you'll notice that I'm sanding a little harder this time. I don't have to worry so much about, for example, going through my thin oil finish because I've got a nicer, thicker kind of build up here coming from this urethane. So I can actually sand this pretty aggressively, make sure I get it nice and smooth, and I can go back in with my varnish once again and add another coat. Now that I've got it nicely sealed from that first coat and all smoothed out again, I can apply this one a little thinner. And it's a good idea to do that just slightly thinner this time because it does tend to build up a little quicker now that it's not soaking in and you are more likely to get those runs. Again, those are not a big deal. If they do happen, you can just sand them out and recoat or even sand them out and move straight to your polishing process. Not a problem one way or the other. but it does save you some time and make things a little easier if you can avoid them. So once again I'm trying to do my nice long strokes. I have quite a bit of paint on this brush so I am going to end up with a couple of slightly sagged areas by the end of this but nothing too substantial. I'm not dripping paint all over the place as you can see by looking at the tape there isn't any really flowing over the edge or anything. And this is what we end up with. A nice beautiful gloss something that we can flatten out in our next video and make sure that we polish up to kind of that beautiful mirror sheen if we want it or more likely just kind of buff it back to a beautiful semi gloss or satin finish. Thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so that you can see what we do in the next video and how this guitar turns out. Thanks again, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.